So I'm going to talk about the Christian Glass, RIP to Christian Glass. In Clear Creek, there was this old case. A grand jury had absolved two sheriff's deputies of wrongdoing. They killed another mentally ill man. This ain't the first time Clear Creek County, this was the sheriff's deputies. One was the marshal, so I can't tell if it's the county or the city, Georgetown or Clear Creek County. But they had actually recommended a couple things. I'm going to talk about that. But first, let's listen to a few of the words to the fallen Arvada officer's girlfriend, okay, who looks also to be a police officer. This is Dylan Michael Vakoff. Dylan Michael Vakoff responded to the scene to disturbance, large family disturbance. Shots got fired. He had nothing to do with nothing. Somebody called 911. Police officer showed up to the scene and he got shot probably just because he was wearing the uniform. Here is what his girlfriend is saying at the funeral. No one tells you how that phone call hits you like a train and all you can do is pray. I received that phone call on September 11th, 2022 at 2.15 a.m. I remember meeting you on November 10th, 2020 at the Frank DeAngelis training facility. It was my first day in pre-academy, and your team was training. You and Joe Galvez were the first people to introduce yourself and tell us if we needed anything, you guys would be there. I didn't predict what would happen in the time to follow. I would see him around the station and always thought to myself how big this guy was and ask myself why his patrol shirt was always two sizes too small. Everyone here knows what I'm talking about. But of course, I never complained. (laughs) He was a very competitive person. He always wanted to compete to see who could recover the most stolen vehicles as we both worked out of Charlie Sector and shared the same patrol car. So neither of us ever had an advantage over one another. He still always won. Dylan was a hard worker and never afraid to get after it. He loved his team and the people he worked with. He loved the job and what it meant to be a police officer. Dylan always had a warrior mentality so R.I.P. R.I.P. to Dylan Michael. So check that out. Okay. Now I want to talk about Clear Creek cops. In August 2020, a grand jury in Clear Creek County absolved two sheriff's deputies of wrongdoing of a May shooting of a mentally ill man. Well, what's that about? Okay. So apparently jurors can recommend different things. And what the jury had recommended in August 2020 was that the deputies needed additional training. Also, the mental health treatment. They needed better access to mental health treatment for Clear Creek residents. My God, you you didn't learn your fucking lessons, did you? Did you get any more training for the deputies? Better access to mental health treatment for Clear Creek residents. Christian Glass several times said he should go to the mental health hospital. He was holding the cops' hands. Look, I'm kind of going through a thing here, so... Just take me to the mental health, you know, uh, clinic, you know, just, you could sit here and talk to me if you want to, you know, but, um, but they're actually making him feel crazy. That's bullshit. That's an unempathetic psychopath. He trusts authority too much. And just like, what was that, all quiet on the Western front, they learned authority wasn't shit. The teacher told them, the students, to go fight and die in World War I. Meanwhile, the teacher stayed back and made money. And kept their teaching job. And then they needed more people. So the government drafted the teacher. And guess what? That teacher was a douchebag. That teacher couldn't goddamn fight for shit. So all those students trusted authority. And they went and fought for, you know, the glory of Germany. Which is the, you know, it's about the, from the perspective of the German. Enrique something, something. All Quiet on the Western Front. There's a Netflix movie coming out about it. I'm actually very excited about it. But he trusted authority. He trusted authority. 911? Okay, I don't think he thought that he was going to get beat up and taken to fucking jail. He got stuck. I'm just driving to the fucking forest. I'm a goddamn American motherfucker. But, you know, they acted like he was smoking weed and they want to catch the weed in his hand or something and they want to beat him up and put fucking hands on him. Throw him in the fucking pen. Whereas a neighbor, what they would do, hey, I'm stuck in a ditch. Can you push me out? Oh, here's a push bar. I gave 50 bucks. Someone came up with the chain. 
pull me out of the ditch. What they didn't do is call, you know, 5, 10, 20 other buddies and then get 50 cars there and then shoot the shit. Shoot me with beanbags, shoot me with a taser, and then ultimately, that didn't happen. What you do with neighbors is you help one another. The whole thing with being a Christian, I don't understand why this shit happens in America. The left wing is supposed to be Christianity, or the right wing is supposed to be a bunch of progressives, or the left wing, whatever. Left wing's progressive, right wing is Christians. This isn't progressive, nor is this Christian. Jesus says, when thou gets thy car stuck in a ditch, thou should get fucking stoned to death. Where I, I never seen that passage. In fact, I'm not for sure if Jesus really got that much. He got aggressive with the fig tree. He flipped over the money changers. He seems to be pretty pacifist for the most part. He Very few violent incidents. Bruce Brown, the district attorney for the 5th Judicial District, including Clear Creek, asked a grand jury to decide whether two deputies should be charged with a crime. In the May 9th shooting of Darren Patterson, 57, Patterson lived in Idaho Springs, was well known to local police for his frequent paranoid calls to 911. Or maybe he was being fucked with. Again, you guys are not goddamn mental health experts. You guys don't know what you're talking about. And a report issued August 6th. I think you're crazy. Because you don't know how to empathize, you sick fucks. You fucked this situation up. You couldn't have, you royally fucked this up. You couldn't have fucked this up anymore if you tried. Clear Creek County would fuck up a wet dream. In a report issued August 6th, but just made public on Friday, the grand jury found that deputies were justified in using deadly force against Patterson after he led them on a chase at high and slow speeds before setting his own car on fire, pointing a handgun at one of the deputies. Legislation passed in Colorado in the midst of a national reckoning over police tactics requires grand juries to issue a public report. After considering charges against law enforcement officers, the Clear Creek jurors took the opportunity opportunity to make a point about the lack of mental health treatment that could have kept Patterson alive. The grand jury recommends to local governments in Clear Creek County that they identify mental health resources, whether in or outside the county, they, that can immediately be made available to law enforcement to assist those individuals in mental health crises. The rural v. city divide I think city cops tend to be better than rural cops because city cops have to deal with real shit. They got to deal with the fucking real shit. So they don't sweat the petty shit. Rural cops, they don't have shit to do. So they pet the hell out of the, the petty and the sweaty. They pet the hell out of the petty and the sweaty shit as much as they can. Just to feel like they're doing something. Just to feel like they're earning their keep. Look, there's peace. You're doing a good job, officers. Thank you. The problem with nonviolence is that it presumes that your oppressor has a conscience. There's five murder charges in Colorado. You have manslaughter. You have first degree, second degree murder, vehicular murder, and negligent murder. Let's read two of them and just see if the actions of this cop, and let's go ahead and drop some names here. Andrew Buen, B-U-E-N, Sheriff Rick Albers. Some marshal, Georgetown marshal, that was the creepy fuck with the shorts. Oh, he's a creepy weirdo. He's got shorts, so he must be good and cool. No, no, he's a pile of shit, too. In fact, not only do I want more Christian glasses in this world, I want more sheriffs to be just like Christian Glass. I wish Christian Glass was the damn sheriff. You should deputize his parents. I like his parents. They're from New Zealand. They don't understand this crazy shit around here. They, it doesn't make any sense to them. If anything, watch them just uh, anthropologically. They'll just show you how, as a human being, how to be. Rick Albers is a sheriff. Heidi McCollum is the, uh, either the district, I think the district attorney or county attorney. Phil Weiser is the attorney general. Jared Polis is the governor. And then the person, the guy that killed him is, uh, what's his face? Damn it. Buen. Andrew Buen. B-U-E-N. I'm not seeing it, but that's who it is. So Andrew Buen, Rick Albers, Heidi McCollum. Is Heidi McCollum, she's going to present it in front of a grand jury. 
And an indictment is not a conviction. Once there's an indictment, then it goes to trial. The whole point of the grand jury is to make sure there's not frivolous. Is there probable cause of a death? Is this frivolous? Uh, I don't know. Let's examine the evidence. Let's see here. Let's see here. Well, there's a dead body. There's bullets. There's gunshot. There's blood all over the place. Yeah, seems like there could have been a crime. There might have been a crime here. Charge it. No. Go through the criminal justice system. And if it's going to come down to a jury of his peers, 12 Americans are going to sit and judge what all those officers did that night. Andrew Buen, B-U-E-N, Marshall Georgetown. So here's the two charges. Did Andrew Buen, did he, second degree murder, let's read the charge. I thought this was verbatim. What's going on here? It says knowingly. They're explaining me that it's knowingly. I want to read the actual charge. Can we? Doesn't look like it's going to let me do that. So knowingly. Okay. So that's. I'll just explain. First degree murder is uh, deliberate. You before you walked out of your house, you said you know you were going to kill the person. You deliberated and you planned it out. Knowingly a second degree murder, it didn't, you didn't plan it, you didn't know that it was going to happen, but something had happened, and you knowingly, whether it was in self-defense or not, killed the person. Knowingly is the operative word there, deliberate, uh, d deliberate, d deliberation or something is the operative word for the first one. So let's uh, keep going. What's manslaughter? CRS 183104. 183104, that's the Colorado Revised Statute. That's the, that's the code. 183104 is manslaughter. And one, a person commits the crime of manslaughter if A, such person recklessly causes the death of another person. So that's what I would charge. Manslaughter and second degree murder. Did they recklessly cause the murder or did he knowingly kill Christian Glass? Did Andrew Bowen, did he recklessly kill Andrew Bowen? Or did he knowingly? I think he knowingly did. Now, if he did it in self-defense, then that would nullify it. But knowingly, right? It wasn't reckless. He intended to shoot. He thought that he was going to stab the boss or something, that marshal. That creepy fucking marshal. Oh no, don't! Don't stab the creepy marshal who's sneaking up behind you! That creepy marshal, what that he reminds me of is just a. There's a story about I don't know if he's racist or not. Just this story about it was a black and white thing, and there was about to be a race riot. Blacks on one side, whites on the other, and this little old white man goes to a black man and he starts wrestling with the black man, and then he tries to take the gun away from the black man, and then that's what precipitates it. That's what fucking starts the brawl. Some stupid fucking. Stupid ass old white man sticking his fucking face and shit in the business that has nothing to do being a weird mother. Hey, no, you're a black man. You can't have a gun over here. No, you can't have a gun over here. So recklessly causes the death of another person or the such person intentionally causes or aids another person to commit suicide. So, you know, that doesn't really apply here, but that's also... A definition of manslaughter, it's a class 4 felony. Manslaughter is a class 4 felony. So the operative word for first degree is deliberative or deliberation. Second one is knowingly, uh, a second degree. And then uh, negligent and manslaughter, there is a, what, what, they're both accidents, but one's recklessly and one's negligently. So recklessly is like, you know, you put the anvil up on top of the thing. That's not negligent. Negligent would be if you're a landlord and you didn't take care of the steps. You, you should have, right? But, you know, wear and tear, shit kind of... But the steps, there was a hole, it fell through, the person fell through, twisted, whatever. So that would be, you know, negligent, not murder, but um, that's what negligent is. So those are the five charges. Negligent, manslaughter, first and second degree murder, and vehicular murder.
So I think it's between 18803 and 18804. No, wait, those are the excessive use of force statutes. So I think it's between second degree murder or manslaughter. It's either second degree murder or manslaughter. That's what Andrew Boone did. And Heidi McCollum and the grand jury should come to that conclusion clearly. If they're fair people, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What they say in that case in Arvada, they said something very interesting in that case in Arvada. They had said, or Johnny Hurley, I, I think it was Arvada, the good Samaritan. They had said that they couldn't charge the cop because they had to see what he saw from his perspective, even if it was against objective reality. So even though they straight up murdered Johnny Hurley, the guy who saved the day, we have to look at their fucked up perception, their fucked up, messed up perception, which is it their messed up perception or is that just a lie that they said after the fact and now we're all fucking saying, well, well, if he thought that the good guy was the bad guy, well then maybe he's the bad guy. You thought the good guy was the bad guy? Then maybe you're the bad guy. That that sounds like you don't know right from wrong. Anyways, that's what they that was a standard that they used for that police officer. They used a standard in the SLV with the guy who shot him. The, the, there was a guy that was robbing the hamburger store. And they had used a standard for him that they said something. But they cannot disprove that it was not self-defense. Well, it can't be self defense So, can it be disproved? Can we say it wasn't self-defense? Can he use the affirmative defense that it was self He can't even say that, can he? He can't say it was self-defense. The only thing he could do is say that it was a legitimate police action. His commander told him to do it, and he was just being, you know, Mr. fucking He-Man. My commander told me to be He-Man. And then, you know, I'll say one thing. His The escalation of force was, you know, on point. He didn't just come onto the scene and just start shooting, right? First it was baton, and then it was bean bags, and then a taser. Then he jumped up on the hood. And then they, after they shot and killed him, you hear them talking about it. What did we just do? What did we just do? So two other laws I want to mention. 18803. 18802 is a failing to report excessive use of force. So you could probably get all four or five of them on that. They need to you know, file... An excessive use of force complaint. They all need to do that. This is clearly... And then 18803 is police officers are subjected to the same criminal penalties if they use excessive force. Excessive force. And that includes related offensive assault. So, yeah, they need to file a use of force uh, a report. And then uh, I look forward to what Heidi McCollum is. She's going to... If the grand jury fail, fails to turn, return a true bill... She has to write a report. She's got to give us a whole bunch of reasons. We got to, what, ignore objective reality. That's how they defended the person that killed Johnny Hurley. Well, you got to ignore, you know, if you're looking from the cop's perspective and he's got a fucked up warped perspective, you got to ignore objective reality and go with his fucked up warped perspective. Oh, okay. But if a guy drives in front of my house and he acts like he's going to drive up onto my lawn and shit and he's fucking with me, nobody's going to... Give me the benefit of the doubt. Oh, okay, okay. What am I saying? I'm saying, <laughs> 18803, I was just reading some of the laws, and uh, I guess we're going to cut this one off. This is just uh, number two. I got a whole bunch of... That's it, that's it. Before, Bruce Brown, I guess there's a different DA. I don't know if he's still there, but there's a precedent there's a precedent of them burying this shit. They fucking buried it. So did Darren Patterson, did he fucking deserve it? I don't know. Let's take a look at Darren Patterson next.